leads to the Old Testament. The book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God let them or led the people about through the way of the Red Sea, the wilderness of the Red Sea. Let me read that again. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Think about that just for a moment. God didn't lead the people the convenient route. But he led them through the way of the wilderness. However, the Bible goes on to say that at the daytime, God led them in a cloud. And at nighttime, God led them by fire. As believers today, we have that same leading available through the person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And not everywhere that God leads you will be convenient. There you go. Amen. Sometimes God is going to lead you through some difficult places. My God. Yes, we want the blessings of God. Yes, we want the favor of God. But let me tell you this morning, we have the blessings of God. We have the favor of God, Amen. even when it seems as though we don't. Amen. Come on. Even when circumstances show a different outlook or from surface, things don't look good. They don't feel good. Sometimes we get sick. Sometimes we go through financial difficulty. Sometimes we get insulted. Sometimes we get terminated from our jobs. Come on. Or let go or lied on, mistreated. Sometimes we lose loved ones who are very near to our hearts. Sometimes we have to go through that pain as a Christian. And Job said, man who is... Born of a woman, his days are few. And he said they're full of trouble. There are those of us sitting in this place this morning or hearing us. You're in that place right now and you're questioning if God hears, if he sees, if he knows. I mean, do you hear me when I pray? Do you hear me when I call on you? Let me tell you this morning, he hears you. The Bible says that his ear is open to the prayers of the righteous. Yeah. And I want to deal with that for just a second. When we say righteous, we're not speaking of your righteousness, oh, your amen. perfection. Oh. Amen. We're not speaking of that. We're speaking of those who have evidenced faith yeah. in Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. Those are those who are the righteousness of God. And who have embraced that righteousness. And you have become, through faith in the blood of Jesus, yeah. the righteousness of God. Amen. But you prayed and you cried and you wondered. But I come to tell you this morning, he's never left you. He never designed this place to be your demise. Come on now. This wilderness is not your demise. Mm. Amen. This wilderness is not where you die. It's where you live. Mm, yeah. And in it, you're going to learn some difficult tasks that you couldn't learn in Egypt. Well, right. uh, come on. 
Hear me this morning. What you learn in the wilderness, you couldn't learn in Egypt. What you learn in the wilderness, you couldn't learn it when you had everything. You didn't learn it when you were in great health. You had to learn it when you got sick. You didn't learn how faithful God was when you had plenty. You learned how faithful he was when you had nothing. Come on. Come on. He's faithful. He's faithful. If I don't get anywhere else in this message this morning, I can stand here today and tell you that everything with me is not great, but everything with him is. And he has been faithful to his people. Never broke a promise. The pain that we as parents have to suffer when we want to do something nice for our kids and everything, we want to give it to them. And then you have to come to that day and say, listen, I can't do it. Not because you lied, but because money wasn't there or whatever the case may be. Let me tell you, God never had to do that with us. He never had to say, I'm sorry. He never had to say, hey, I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done that. He's always been faithful. Always. And I want you to hear me this morning, if, if we can, I want to preach a message entitled, The Way of the Wilderness. The Way of the Wilderness. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for this opportunity and this privilege to stand before your people. We ask you right now for your anointing to preach this message that I believe that you've given us for the service. I ask your anointing upon the people to hear what I believe you've given us. And Lord, help us all to be attentive and to hear what you have to say to us individually. Anoint us all and keep us all. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. As you study the account of the children of Israel and all of the years that they spent in Egyptian bondage, you'll find so many lessons that are taught to us and how we even see ourselves mirrored in the children of Israel. We see God's hand orchestrating events. We see God all the time that they were there in Egypt keeping them. But there was a time that came where they had to leave Egypt and there's a time that comes where we all have to leave Egypt. We've got to leave bondage and go into promise. But from that bondage to promise there is a wilderness that we must go through. From the promise to the possession of that promise, there is a wilderness that we have to face. I want you to think about the word wilderness for just a moment, if you would. It's amazing as you just a regular word, a regular definition, but a wilderness is a place, naturally speaking, where things don't grow. Think about that. It's an empty place, a desolate place. There's no beautiful flowers in the wilderness. There are no lilies and roses in the wilderness. There's no beauty in the wilderness. There's no comfort in the wilderness. However, how is it that God can take a place where naturally speaking, things don't grow, but he can take his people to that place and we experience growth. Come on, somebody. A place that there is no growth, we tend to grow in that place because that's the place where you can't say, I helped myself. It's in the wilderness where you learn how to depend on God. It's in the wilderness that you learn that I didn't do it. I'm sorry, Mr. Frank Sinatra. I didn't do it my way. It's in the wilderness that you learn that you can't produce anything. I want you to think about that. See, there's no producing anything in the wilderness. But in the wilderness of God, he produces something in you that you couldn't learn when you were in Egypt. Moses was in the palace all of his life. But God had to take 
Moses out of the palace and put him on the backside of the desert. And when he was on the backside of the desert, without the glitz and the glamour of the, the palace, God said, listen, I'm going to cause you to experience growth right here in the wilderness. I want you to think about that for just a moment. It's in the wilderness that you're going to experience something that you couldn't experience in Egypt. God said, I want to take you through this place, but I want you to notice how did they come out of the wilderness? God told Moses, he said, I want you to take a lamb and I want you to examine that lamb. Take it on the 10th day of the month. And on the 14th day of the month, I want you to kill that lamb. And I want you to take the blood from that lamb and I want you to apply it to the doorposts and the lentils. You can't miss the type thing. Come on. He said, when you apply the blood, whether you apply the blood or not, at midnight, the death angel is coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Whether you receive of the blood or not, the death angel is coming through. Right. And he said, and when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Yeah. It's the blood. It wasn't the performance. It wasn't Moses. It was the blood that God was looking for. And when he saw the blood on the house, it didn't matter how big the house was. Come on. Sometimes we get caught up in the material things. God said, I'm not looking for the stature of your house. I'm not looking for the size of your bank account. I'm looking for the rich blood of Jesus Christ. You can have the blood and live under a bridge. Come on, think about that for a moment. But the alternative is you can live in a mansion and not have the blood. So it was the blood of that, that, that God was looking for. He said, when I see it, I'm going to pass over you. And when God saw it, he came through that night through the death angel. And every firstborn was killed. Well, there was no blood, there was no life. My, my. Yeah, that's right. And it's the same today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's Amen. no blood. Amen. There is no life. Amen. No matter how talented you are, how gifted you are, if you have not been washed in the blood of Jesus, it is meaningless. Yeah. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, it's vanity. It's empty nothings yeah. without the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to hear me. And stay with me just a few moments this morning. They came out through the blood. It was that night that Pharaoh saw all of that took place in Egypt. And he rushed the children of Israel out of Egypt. Because there was a cry that night in Egypt. You know, it was so amazing. The power of God was so pronounced. In Egypt that night, the dog couldn't even bark. I mean, go back and read the text. Now, when God comes through, God began to orchestrate things. He said, I don't want a dog barking. I don't want anything. I just want you to stay here. Get in the house. Don't leave the house. And this is, listen, the house is not the church. The house is Jesus Christ. See, we got too many people who join church and think they found security. Your security is not in this building. It's not in this preacher. Your security is in Jesus Christ. You found the covering, but it's not the blood of Jesus. It won't suffice for what the enemy is bringing against you. And we'll serve, listen, we serve a good God, but we have opposition from the devil. He's seeking to destroy you, saints of God. He's seeking to destroy me. No one is safe other than those who are washed in the blood of Jesus. He took them out and this is where we, we get to come to our text. They came out of Egypt. And the Bible says, instead of God, chapter 13, verse 17, Exodus, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not the way of the Philistines. See, there is a convenient way and then there's God's way. Come on, yeah. preacher. Yeah. And most of us want the convenient way. Yeah. Come on, don't Come get on. deep. Let's tell it like it is. Who in here is saying, I can't wait to go through a trial? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not praying that prayer. Yeah. I can't wait to stumble and fail. That's not a prayer that a Christian is praying. We don't want to go through a trial. We don't want to go through hardship. We don't want to go through these things. Amen. We want the convenient and the easy way. Yeah. God said, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to take you where you want to go. 
Because see, where you want to go, you don't see what's there. The Philistines were a warlike people. And as soon as the children of Israel would have gotten there and saw the Philistines, they would have crumbled and failed. Some of the places you think that are best for you is the place where you're going to be destroyed. I want you to hear that now. Some of the places that you think are the best places are some of the people that you think you need to be connected with because from surface it looks good. From surface it looks convenient. But right there you can be destroyed because God never told you to go there. Come on. Come on. Isn't it amazing in scripture that God says I'm not going to take you this way. I'm going to take you. See listen to this. The way that looks easy is the way you and I usually go. Yeah. Right, right. The way that looks hard from surface is the way that God usually takes us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You don't believe me? Read the scripture. The children of Israel had to go to a land that was full of giants. People of God went and looked at the land and said, we can't go that way. There are giants in the land. But God said, this is the way I told you to go. Don't put your faith or don't look at the giants. Look at me. And if you keep your eyes on me, the giants won't harm you. All the devil can really do is threaten you. He has no control over your life. He has no control over your circumstances. God is orchestrating events in your life. You got to learn that lesson. When you learn that, you'll wake up in the morning with a different attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You won't be looking for something bad to happen. You'll be expecting something good. Yeah. Bartimaeus was expecting something good. Somebody said, how do you know? The man was blind his whole life. Yeah. But when Jesus said, bring him to me, he stood up with expectation. How do you know? Because the beggar's blanket that he used his whole life, when he stood up, he threw it away. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, he said, I'm not going to need this no more because Jesus has called me. You got to come on, say to God. You got to wake up with an expectation that God's going to bless you. You got to have an expectation that God's going to keep you. He's God. I'm not going to take you that way because that way. Is not going to bless you. I'm going to take you through the wilderness because I've got to teach you something. Yeah. I've got to teach you something that you couldn't learn in Egypt. My, my. I'm going to cause you to leave. There are those of us in this place, you can look at various situations in your life, places that God may have told you to leave, that from surface it looked like I need to be here. Come on. But you, you think about it. You leave the beauty, the glitz, and the glamour, and you go here. Yeah. Come on now. I want you to think about something for just a moment. When you read the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible says that God told the children of Israel, he said, listen, I brought you out to take you in. Yeah. And see, we will ask, what am I doing in the wilderness then? Don't worry about that. Just while you're in the wilderness, I've got to teach you some things that you couldn't learn while you were in Egypt. So this is the place that's necessary for learning. Look at somebody and say, I'm on my training ground. Come on now. You're on your training ground. This is where God is training you. This is where God is teaching you. It doesn't feel good, but there's this enemy in a me. Yeah. And it's called flesh. Yeah. And every one of us in this building, Woo. preacher and lay member, we've got uh, flesh. We've yeah. got to stop standing here and acting like y'all got the problem. Yeah. Listen, this is a we thing. All of us have issues. And God said, I'm trying to kill this flesh that's in you. It's got to be crucified. Because if you go here with all of that flesh, it's going to destroy you. You'll think I did it my way. You'll think I got it my way. You'll think I accomplished all of this. And God said, I've got to strip that away from you. Jacob, that's why I'm going to wrestle with you. I've got to touch your fire and I've got to cripple you so you can stop fighting me and you can start holding on to me. Have I got a witness in here? This morning. Now I'm going to say something. Some of y'all men don't want to give me an amen. But if you believe me, go ahead and shout, I thank God for the wilderness. Amen. See, see, two, most in the 
church, that doesn't sound like faith. Yeah. Woo. Come on. Yeah. Woo. What faith yeah. is, is in, in modern Christianity, is whatever I say, I can get it. See, we don't realize how messed up we are. And how, I mean, and if you start naming and claiming and possessing everything you say, and God just steps back, we go to car box and we pour all on cars, we march around them ten times and think this is my car. It is greed and it's covetousness. God said, I'm trying to cripple you so you won't be so greedy. Come on. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Stop seeking things. Hallelujah. The things are the blessings from God. They are the things that God says, I'm going to give you this if you seek my way. But this is what we do. I want it my way. I'm telling you the problem, saints, is me. Brother Larry, you're not my problem. Come on. God has been dealing with me, and I don't go too far, about the enemy within that we won't deal with. And because we won't deal with self, we've got to blame everybody else for the condition that when my boss just won't hear me, and so that's why I ain't making no money. No, that's not the truth. Your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your mother or your father, your co-worker, your classmate, your friend, they are not your problem. Look in the mirror when you get home and say, this is my problem. And until he is dealt with, I won't progress in the things of God. Let me tell you something. God can eliminate everybody around you who's ever hurt you, and you still won't have problems. How? Because you still exist. You can leave Columbus and move to Alaska. You still gonna have problems. Why? Because you showed up. When we started this church, a problem showed up because I came. On the side of life, when you joined, you became another problem. I'm a problem. You're a problem. Why? Because all of us are problems. We are people. Listen here. Or the pastor just don't know. Or we and the pastor, the folk just don't know. No, we are an issue. And I can't handle you. Only God can. Religion says, go ahead, throw them out. When you throw them out, you still will have problems. You're trying to weed out everything in your church that don't agree with you. You're still going to have problems because you're there. Oh. The way of the wilderness. Here, I'm going to learn something. You know, God... There was a convenient way for me. I'm gonna be personal. Warehouser was my convenience. Yeah. The salary was good. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was what I wanted. It was what I needed. The potential was great. I'm talking about the earning potential was amazing. You could get to a certain level. I mean, you just live in comfort. <laughs> People who work there making, and this is Columbus, Mississippi, man. You make thirty-five, forty dollars an hour. Oh, sir. Yeah. With overtime? Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, one day, God interrupts the plan and says, Leave. Yeah. No, 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 not you. Jesus. You can't, you can't. No, 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 no. You're going to have to leave. And listen, don't take what I'm saying wrong and go quit your job tomorrow. Come on. Come on. This is my personal testimony. And I'm going to use my personal testimony to tell you you've got to do that. Come on. This is what God told me. But he said leave and I, I couldn't. And for the longest I, did, I wouldn't leave. And all of a sudden, the day I was sitting there working, hadn't had any problems, hadn't had any issues. And all of a sudden, I was sitting there and I was doing my, my, my route or whatever I did out there. And I, got, I sat down and I couldn't walk. And, and my boss was, was, I mean, my, uh, at the time they called him process resources. He said, what's wrong? He said, man, I don't know. My knee had swollen up so bad and I couldn't move. I couldn't walk. And I hadn't had any issues. 
I went to the doctor. The doctor said I'd never seen a 34-year-old man with a knee in this bad shape. We're going to have to do surgery. I missed 10 months from work. I was so ready to go back because if any of you ever been on disability, that check ain't good. <laughs> that 60% income and already everybody was going, that ain't good when you're used to this comfort. I worked and I rehabbed and I did all this. I was walking fine. I went back. A month later, the exact same thing happened. Jesus. Jesus. Went back to the doctor. He said, I'm sorry. We're going to have to go in and do another surgery. My God. I went back and all of a sudden, I had the other surgery. And I was still talking about work. <laughs> because I was chasing the check. Yeah. And I wasn't chasing God. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. I was pursuing the ladder of making 35 and all of this stuff that came with the job. And I forgot God. I was comfortable where I was. And all of a sudden, a few weeks later, it was infected. They said, we're going to have to do another surgery. Oh, my God. And all of a sudden, I'm broken and broken. And I'm, I'm praying and saying, Lord, what do I do? How do I do it? It gets to the time where I'm ready to go back. I'm ready to submit my paperwork. I'm ready to be reinstated. And God says, don't go back. I walked in the warehouse with a letter. And my co-worker said, man, what are you doing? I said, this is it. I said, I'm done. I'm turning in my resignation. He said, man, you, you, you probably shouldn't do that. How are you going to eat? I was told later that I was, you know, that, that they were when you're not there, you know that's when they talk a lot. Yeah, Man, he's crazy. You read on it, man. You know how much money he's making out here or how much money he could make? Let me say it better. And what you walked away from and how much you can make him. Let me tell you something. Now, again, don't take this for your own. But let the lesson bless you. I have had more peace and less money. Because God told me to do it. I, have, I mean, listen, it's been some rough times. And this doesn't feel good. Because the way God tells me to go, it hasn't been.
Lord. I wish I had a mirror. I wish I had about 40 mirrors. I would just stand up here and do this and preach the sermon. And I would just get you to hold yours and look at it while we preach. That's how you really receive a sermon. Yes, sir. Look at yourself. Here we are. Now we're in the wilderness. We're years in. They, God said, I ain't taking you over here through the Philistines area. I'm going to take you another route. But you've got to follow the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And wherever it leads you, you've got to go. That's it. That's it. If this was a natural military strategy, it would have been the craziest military strategy ever. Yeah. God led them through a way where they could be surrounded by the enemy. Yeah. And when Pharaoh heard the way that the children of Israel went, he got his men together. He said, did y'all? You realize they went through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea? Get all the horses. Get all the chariots. We're going to surround them in. But see, God knew what he was doing before he led you here or there. He knew what he was doing. To the people, it doesn't look right. It looks crazy what you're doing. God ain't in that. You know that's what religion says. God ain't in that. You ain't supposed to be suffering like that. You better read your Bible. I'm not saying you're supposed to suffer your entire life, but Jesus said you're going to suffer persecution. Yeah. Are we so shocked Amen. by persecution right. when the Bible told us we would have to endure it? Amen. He said, but I overcame the world. Yeah. And we're in Christ Jesus, so we are overcomers. Yeah. We just, listen, we just got to start believing what we have and who we are. Pharaoh said, we're going to go out here and we're going to corner the men. Children of Israel were walking. They were moving. And I'm going to close here in just a moment. They got to the place where the Red Sea was. <coughs> now they got this huge sea in front of them. And the Egyptians are behind them and pursuing them. Yeah. They surrounded them in this wilderness. But I want you to know something before I go any further. Who led them to the wilderness? Remember the Bible says that it was the spirit of God that led Jesus where? Into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He ushered him into that place. And when he went through, the Bible says that when he came out, he came out in the power yeah. of the spirit. Yeah. You're not going to come out the same way you went in if you go through it the right way. Come on. Amen, brother. Right. Here, the people say, Moses, you brought us out here to kill us. Read the Bible. We, we told you in Egypt to leave us alone. Yeah. Leave us alone. Let us stay here in Egypt. We're okay. It's convenient. Let me tell you something. Bondage is never convenient. We've got to stop being afraid to follow the leading of the Spirit. You can't be dependent on the church or your preacher. You've got to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit. He will lead you. And Moses said, listen, Lord, the people are crying against me. What am I going to do? And he looked at the people and he told them, he said, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. For the Egyptians that you see today, hmm. you will see them no more forever. Mama. God told him, he said, Moses, look at your hand. What is that in your hand? <laughs> it's a stick. <laughs> right. It's a stick. He said, I want you to take that stick. And I want you to stretch it over the waters. My God. Yeah. And if you believe me, I'm going to move the sea and you're going to walk across on dry ground. Man, yeah. Man please. <laughs> Child, please. 
So this seed that's been sitting here before we existed, on, sir. it's going to move out of the way. Yeah. No mud. My God. Oh, now come on. We're not going to slip and fall and stumble in the mud. You're going to move the seed and drop the ground at the same time. Yeah. That's what I said. Now, it's up to you to believe the supernatural. The supernatural exists and it is real, but do you believe it? Moses said, Israel, go forward. <laughs> Nicholas, you go. You know how we are. <laughs> Y'all not scared some of us are. Oh, AJ, you go. <laughs> Come on. Tamai, go ahead. Now, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know who took the first step, but Moses stretched up the rod. Yeah. The indication in the text, because see, we won't move until we see something most times. God said, I'm not moving that seed until you walk. Oh, y'all got to hear me. I'm not moving that seed until you step. The indication in the text is that the seed didn't just move all at once, but it gradually moved. As they step forward through the city. And see, when you start stepping, faith begins to rise. You didn't come out here to die. You came out here to live. You didn't come out here to be surrounded and suffocated by your problems. I'm going to sustain you while you're in the wilderness. Then they stepped out in that sea. And I can it was three million of them. Give or take. It wasn't me. You think about it. It's about two or three of us or four or five of us. If I told you step into a walk, how many of y'all would actually go? <laughs> Don't get deep. I see your face. <laughs> Man, you better go on yourself. <laughs> All we need is one. Do you hear me? Because see, one can chase a thousand. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. One, just one can start something. It was a William J. Seymour who said, I'm just going to pray. Yeah. I'm just going to seek the face of God. Yeah. And because of one man's Woo. obedience. Yeah. Man, you've got half a million or half a billion people around the globe who are tongue-talking, spirit-filled yeah. believers Woo. because of yeah. one. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know what God does? When the spirit begins to move, man's rules leave. Yeah. All right. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Classism and segregation, racism and all of this, yeah. it goes out the window. Yeah. That's when God begins to move. Yeah. When man moves, he sections off yeah. a certain amount of people. Yeah. The Bible says there was a mixed multitude. I, I wish I had a witness yeah. right there. That was a mixed Multitude. Yeah. That's the church. Yeah. And mixed Come blacks on, and whites yeah. and Asians and natives. A yeah. mixed multitude. That's what God is called. Yeah. You know what they did? They stepped across. They didn't just walk across. They were shouting. They were praising God. And look what God did to the enemy. Yeah. The same place that God blessed his own people became a curse to the enemy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. He didn't bring you out here to kill you. And if he got to walk you through a red sea, remember the cloud was leading them. And the cloud was over the sea. Well, y'all, we're going to have to go over this sea. I don't know how we're going to get there. He is with you. Yeah. And they begin to walk. And as they walked, they were walking on dry ground. And the psalmist said the waters congealed. Yeah. What does that mean? They became a wall. He calls them to stand still on each side. And they're walking across. Mind you, the folk in Jericho heard about this. What God does in your life, people are going to hear about it. Amen. See, people yeah. love scandal, but they don't want to hear blessing. Amen. Come on, preacher. Let them talk about the past. 
mess and the scandal and the, the junk you were involved in, forget about that. You keep your eyes on the Lord and you keep pursuing Him and chasing after the Lord. Let them talk. Listen, don't try to defend yourself. And when God blesses you, don't look back and say, that's what y'all get. That's not the heart of a Christian. You reach out and bless your enemies too. And do good to them that despitefully use you. That's a heart of a Christian. And pray for them that hurt you. The way of the wilderness, and I'm finished. You can stand. Come on up here, Junior. Singers. The way of the wilderness is not easy. But it's definitely worth it. Yes, amen. Because it's while I'm here that I begin to really learn the lessons that God has ordained for me to learn. And whatever you got to do, man, what I don't know what to just begin to just begin to play it softly. While you're here, and I'm not talking about this church per se, but while you're in the place that you're in. Trust him. Let him teach you how to trust. Because you're going to go through some hardship. It's reality for Christians. I said it earlier and I'll say it again. Job was the one who knew, I think, more about problems than any of us. Yeah. Hmm. And he said, man who was born of a woman, his days are few and full of trouble. You're going to go through some hardship. But the good news is, you're never alone. You're never alone. And there's not one person in this place who can say, God has ever left you. Even when you left him. The prodigal son left home, but the father never stopped loving him. The father didn't put him out, he left. But when he came back, the father was waiting on him. Amen. And he loved him. Daniel had to go through a lion's den, but he was not alone. Amen. Hebrew boys had to go through a fiery furnace, but they were not alone. Amen. John was on the Isle of Patmos, but he was not alone. Amen. Jesus was in Gethsemane, but he was not alone. And I come to tell you this morning that you are not alone. And if you're here this morning, there's a need in your life. There's a problem. You're hurting. You may be struggling. Whatever the case may be, you may feel like God has left you. But I'm telling you, he hasn't left you. He's still there. But maybe you're the one who's drifted away from him. And that's why you feel that emptiness. Because you've allowed your trial to push you away from him. He hasn't left you. And he won't leave you. So this morning, I'm going to ask you to come around this altar and begin to pray and seek the face of God. Hallelujah. Whatever the need is, just come. <coughs> just begin to call on the name of Jesus. There is power just begin to lift your hands and call on the name of the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Just call him this morning. Call on the name of Jesus.
you need salvation, confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that he is risen. You shall be saved. Deliverance, trust him. You need a blessing, a touch, ask him. Call on him. He will answer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you for this opportunity to come and pray. And as we stand around this front, we can't trust in a man or church preacher. But Lord, help us to trust in you and what you've provided for us. You are the answer to all things that we need. You are the hope that we need this morning. Mend our hearts. Heal our hearts. Forgive us for a lack of faith. Forgive us for worrying and doubting you. But help us this morning to trust in you and your leading. Help us to follow you. Help us to follow you. We know that you are leading us, but Lord, we need to follow your way. Help us this morning, even if it's the way of the wilderness. Help us to trust you while we're there. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you the glory this morning, even as we would leave this place, but not your presence. We ask your blessings and that we will hold the word that you've given us in our hearts, and that we will trust you today, tomorrow, and throughout this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you put your arms around somebody and love on them? Come on, love on them. We're going to be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Invite somebody to come out. We love you, saints, and we will see you Wednesday night. Be encouraged this morning. God bless you.